Hello, this is April 3rd, 2020, and Preeti Sabarwal is with me. She is from Faridabad, a very uh, small city, or not, not a small city, I think it's an industrial city close by to New Delhi. And this is uh, only for our uh, international audience. So welcome, Preeti. I don't know what to call this. Uh, we tried live streaming. It's not happening because of maybe bad uh, internet connections or bandwidth, whatever. So we decided to record it and now we will upload it later on. Welcome, Preeti. I uh, really I want to extend you a very, very warm welcome uh, to be here with me at such a short notice. I'm, We've known each other for quite some time, but uh, it's been, uh, you know, off and on whenever we are speaking, it's it's been a different kind of bonding that has happened all along uh, because maybe we uh, appreciate each other's work so much. Yeah. I deeply appreciate the work that you do. So Thank I would you. love to know more about the kind of work you do and how did you actually go, get into this kind of work? Please. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much, Nina, for inviting me for, for this, for giving me this opportunity. And I would love to share my life with you, both personal and professional. <laughs> Is it no, okay? No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I deeply appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So uh, first, let me answer like how come in this uh, field, this industry, because I come from IT background and more than 10 years I spent in IT, you know, in a telecom software company. Before that, I did six months of lecturership, teaching means uh, teaching uh, B.Tech, B.E. students in an institute and then this job and never ever I thought of uh, changing my industry. You know, there was a guy who predicted this, that you're going to leave your job and shift to training and coaching. Uh, this happened in, uh, I think, yeah, 2007 or 8, 2007. Okay. And when he told me this, I said, come on. I don't know anything else. I can never ever leave IT. So I just don't believe you. And see, this was meant to happen. And I was uh, pregnant with my second child, my daughter. And just I was reading and reading just to create a robust psychological and spiritual foundation for my baby. Okay. And I had read so many books, uh, gained so much knowledge. And I felt like sharing it with people around me, you know, the company where I was working. And I spoke to my HR, I spoke to my boss, and my boss even wrote a mail to our HR that please let Preeti do such training, whatever she wants to do. And uh, it took some time because I was always looked at as a technical person. And then they gave me the first opportunity and I did a program, Your Life is Your Design. And uh, somehow like there were very few participants and uh, it was not that uh, not a very exciting thing with just a few participants, but still, I just treasured the whole experience of preparing uh, the training and then conducting, delivering, engaging the participants, interacting with the participants, and maybe the seed was sown. And then, and then I took uh, uh, the thing maternity leave, uh, and my daughter was born, and it was a six month gap mm -hmm. during that period. And after I joined back and resumed my job, I just could not adjust in my profile. Mm. So some voice was bothering me, Preeti, you are not born to do this. You are born to do something else. And then because that message was clear to the universe, I started getting answers to what I am meant to do. And what is the purpose of my life? And I kept on reflecting through meditation, through so many ways. I was seeking for that reply that I am not born for this. I am born for something else. All right. And then, yeah. Then that idea came in that I realized uh, something like this during my pregnancies. Maybe I am uh, supposed to write a book on holistic pregnancy. You know, how you can build that kind of foundation for your baby. So uh, I started writing, but there was something more that was coming up. And I wrote a blog uh, on the intranet of my company excellence through nlp nlp is a behavioral science yes. you must be aware of yes. neuro linguistic programming right and i got good response on that blog and somebody told me why don't you do a training excellence through nlp and i got like more than 40 nominations and then i got extraordinary feedback and that like boosted my confidence that yes i can do this and then i spoke to my boss very very honestly frankly that i aspire to become a trainer and a coach 
and if you allow me i want to do trainings here and i can assure you that my work won't be impacted in any way he said go ahead as long as you're meeting your targets as long as you're doing your work i i am not bothered what else you are doing now if you need any support from my side i'm there uh, i was always fortunate to have such bosses <laughs> i was just about to say that <laughs> yeah yeah i could share very authentically and he supported me fully mm -hmm. and i did more than 25 workshops at mahindra comviva where i was a senior manager okay and in every training like i grew not just as a trainer as a coach i grew as a human being mm -hmm. and that was very fulfilling and then i got the best internal trainer award for 2013 and 2004 uh, sorry 2012 and 2013 fantastic and again again it was a boost to my self esteem my confidence that yes i can do it and then there was a time like uh, it was the now or never situation for me i said to myself that i have to quit the job and start you know from scratch and it was not easy because i didn't have any prospects i didn't have any experience and i am the first generation entrepreneur in my family so i had not seen anybody doing any kind of business <laughs> so i had all all those fears and doubts and then i left my job it's okay i'm sharing all this in so many ways please detail. do please do this is this is what i wanted you to share because uh, a little later i'll tell you why i'm asking you these questions and okay. what is the purpose behind doing these kind of sessions yeah please go ahead please go yeah. ahead. so this was december 2013 i launched my first book life mantras by life coach i'll show you that book yes. this is the book which i launched okay. and then i launched my company bring it a little closer to the camera priti yeah yes Yeah. Live mantras by a life coach. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So it's a very beautifully designed, colorful book. Mm -hmm. Very, very uh, this thing visually appealing book. Uh, right. Book which appeals to even non-readers. A lot of pictures are there. Mm -hmm. So and I got great reviews for this book, and I launched my company also, Thoughtful Engagement, during the same period. Okay. And it was just few weeks after that I came to know about my mom's. Uh, fourth the mom's uh, fourth stage cancer oh my and the doctor said that she is not going to survive maybe just few weeks no not even months just few weeks because no, the condition is quite quite serious quite pathetic hmm. so the damage is at that extent and it was like one of the darkest phase of my life there were no opportunities i quit my job there were no prospects no clients nothing to look forward to no visiting the hospital every day seeing my mom dying and it was like i thought the life is like uh, is going to uh, continue to be like this no i was like i had all the doubts but somehow i always respected my decision of you know uh, taking up this new thing i somehow I never looked at this decision like i'm going to go back to it again no right. no matter how many setbacks or uh, failures i have to face how many rejections i have to face i will not go back i am going to make this work and then my mom expired in march 2014 and in april i got my first opportunity i think because of her blessings i got a beautiful opportunity in delhi and it was attended by some hr heads and some professors some ceos and i did this program at dma delhi management association from stress to streamline life Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was my first program, and you know, the some of the participants are still my clients. I'm still Fantastic. getting lot. Yeah, lot of. Work. I'm sure. I'm sure the way you may have uh, delivered that program at that point in time, from stress to streamlined life, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's like as if you were kind of living the whole thing. Yes. Maybe. And uh, I've seen a lot of presenters, a lot of trainers and coaches who, when they are presenting. the vibration is perhaps not reaching out to the audience you can actually feel it you can you can see it i'm i'm not saying that they are faking or anything i'm i'm not hinting at that but yeah, what yeah. i'm trying to say is that uh, un unless you actually feel the material within your mm -hmm. within your existence you have to it let go of it and you have to walk your talk right you know a principle that i follow and very very strictly that i follow i preach only what i practice myself fantastic that's very clear to me i'll not talk about well we are losing you which i don't practice in my 
Maybe lost you for a moment there. Can you just repeat what you said? Uh, you okay. you preach what yes. you practice, right? I see. Yeah, leaders walk their talk. So I only preach what I practice myself. Fantastic, fantastic. I think that is the that is the key to whole uh, process of delivering materials. Yes. Right. Uh, to to kind of uh, you know avoid the armchair philosophy, armchair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> armchair preaching, as as uh, as it is called, uh, on the HR circles, mm -hmm. to uh, to avoid all that and actually reach out to the audience in a very clear-hearted manner. Yeah, yeah, and it should be heart-centered. See, ultimately, yeah. you need to connect to the soul sitting there. Now, if it sure. is uh, at a deeper level, then only people get what you're saying. Otherwise, Correct. knowledge is everywhere. The content is everywhere. We live in yeah. Google world. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I would agree with you hundred percent. Yeah, no, you don't have to just share your knowledge. You have to transfer the wisdom which you have gained through life experiences, the mistakes yes. that you have done, the failures you have experienced. No, Very then, no, you are sharing your experience that whatever I have faced through, no, gone through. I don't want you to go through the same right. experiences. Right, I understand. I understand totally. And then uh, right. after after afterwards you built your business uh, to uh, if you if you don't mind my asking you uh, yeah, yeah. four sorry. figure five figure six figures yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. give us yeah. some numbers give us yeah, some numbers I don't want to share but yes I have been able to create my place and to to get extremely good opportunities. Out of like 60 corporates with which I have worked as a trainer, more than 50 are one of the best in the world in their own domain. Right. So I had never ever expected you know, to work with such clients from PwC to Google. I've interviewed for Google. I've taken some interviews for Google. I have worked with, I'm an associate training partner with Hero Mind Mind, and they have also given me great opportunities. So I've been fortunate and it's like uh, people ask me, what's the secret? How do you get all this work? How do you get all this opportunity? I said, maybe my work, work is going to do more good work. I just look at it like this. And every opportunity needs to be given 100%. Now you should never feel that I have done this training so many times. I don't have to rework on it or I don't have to review my content. I can just deliver. No, I should. I can feel lazy uh, again working on the content. Every training, like communication workshop, I have done. I don't remember the count how many times I have done. I am going to redesign the whole thing. Now, what does communication mean to me? Now, yeah. so when I'm presenting that freshness, a fresh understanding of whatever I am putting, and that. That power comes automatically in delivery because it is so, so much fresh in your mind. No? And so you are not just talking about something, you're living those things and then you're sharing. Right. And every audience is different. Every audience yeah. is different. They have their own concerns. They have their own uh, ideas. Uh, they come from a different, uh, uh, different kind of paradigms, which are Absolutely. also set. So you, you can't just be uh, parroting materials. It's yes. more about connecting with the audience all the time. So every workshop I feel, whenever mm -hmm. I'm delivering something, you know, even though the materials are kind of set already, but it's not like set in stone because sometimes I just mm -hmm. change the whole thing on the spot. So that yeah. um, I, I can I can understand what you're saying. Yeah. And then you have to keep on like constantly gauge your audience. What is working? What is not working? Exactly. How you need to adapt? And what kind of examples will work for them? No matter how prepared you are. If you're not in the moment, you're not with your audience, you cannot uh, be 100% like effective. You cannot be effective at all, actually. You have okay. to be in the moment. And then so many new ideas, so many quotes. I say, and like, it is coming from where? I don't know. I didn't prepare for all this. In every training, I'm like, surprise, off from where it is coming? Just because my, you are in the moment. I, I remember one thing that my uh, mentor, uh, Proctor, uh, always said. You keep yeah. filling your subconscious with materials, content, materials, content, mm -hmm. and just one fine day you will find that the, when the cup is full, 
it will mm. just start overflowing and you'd be wondering where it came from you know yeah, yeah. i have never even read about this and right. i don't know where it is all right. flowing out from so right. uh, i mean I've, I've seen it several yeah. times in my uh, like, sorry sorry for no 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 please go ahead yeah. Yeah. Yes, you feel like writing it down, but you can't. So that oh, this is a new <laughs> idea. No, I, I some sometimes sometimes you wonder if uh, all the meetings if they get recorded, it will be like even though they are uh, around the same subject matter mm -hmm. and same topic, but it'll like be a different workshop every time, a different mm -hmm. training yeah. program every time. You know, so it's yeah. like a full archive ready. But unfortunately, uh, most of these corporates don't allow uh, yeah. video recording, so. Right. I don't think the material is lost because it is ultimately coming from the subconscious. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. at your uh, uh, perusal anytime. <laughs> but we need to be tuning inside uh, yes. ourselves to be able to get in touch with that. Absolutely. Uh, Preeti, I am having one question in my mind mm -hmm. that uh, you have reached very good, great heights in your profession. And uh, the present day situations have uh, suddenly changed. So now, uh, you know, uh, we don't know, we live, uh, we are living in uh, uncertain very times. Uncertain. I'm very hopeful, very positive. I'm sure you also are. And the training in coaching industry is already uh, being projected as a $2.5 billion industry and growing. Mm -hmm. So uh, what advice to, would you uh, give to the people who are coming into the profession now, thinking that it is going to be a wonderful profession? thinking mm. that uh, a lot of education will need to be dispensed mm. after these present day situations are over also and during this time also because people mm. need all kind of support mm. so what exactly do you uh, want to tell the new people who are coming or the older people also who have been seasoned mm. and uh, are there in the profession for a longer duration of time but mm. somehow uh, the business is dwindling now what exactly would you like to tell them First thing, like, uh, as long as you are solving your client's problems, as long as you are meeting or exceeding their expectations, you'll get work. First thing you have to tell yourself, as long as you are solving different type of problems and the better, the more like quality problems, the more bigger problems you are able to solve more effectively, the better work opportunities you get. So you should look at yourself as a problem solver. And keep on seeing what is the current problem they are facing. How can I address? How can I help them addressing it in a better way? The first thing. Second is definitely the face-to-face -face trainings or no, means you have to come online. And you have to become a digital coach and learn all the required things. <laughs> right. And you, you just cannot limit yourself. See, there are so many people who need your counseling, your coaching, your training, your insights at this point of time. As a wellness coach, I feel wellness is one area where the scope is going to be unlimited. Absolutely. Unless and until we make, we bulletproof our immune system. Now we are just facing the threat of Corona. There yeah. will be another virus. There will be other problems and yeah. we we'll have to keep on facing because we are, we are creating this kind of scenario with global warming and now, we are responsible with so many satellites now, in space. We know we are responsible now, because of EMF. So these things are going to worsen. We cannot just make them improve overnight, which the sins we have been committing for, uh, for many years now. Right. And we have started seeing <laughs> the right. effects of those sins. Right. This is just one effect. And we have to be prepared. So... Now, when I talk about wellness, it is holistic wellness, your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual resilience. Right. Now, are you aware of this formula? Stress is equal to pressure upon resilience. Yes. Right. And resilience is not just physical resilience. It is, again, all the four areas I talked about. So there will be more pressures. Because there will be more pressures, there will be more stress, chronic stress we are going to face you know, in near future. For right. that, we need to build resilience. Right. So we have to focus on our wellness in every dimension. Right. So I, I, I also work on resilience quite a lot, as you know. Uh, mental resilience, I call it as my signature subject. But uh, yes. it's not just mental resilience. You, as, mm -hmm. as uh, you handle holistic wellness, yeah. uh, for me, it's like mental resilience related with business coaching. Yes. But 
holistic wellness is very very important as you uh, said have you covered holistic wellness in any of your books i'm just curious yeah so holistic wellness is the whole holistic pregnancy is about holistic wellness yes this yes. book i've read that book i've read that book of yours <laughs> and you, you just bring a little uh, bring it a little closer to the camera yes 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 now it is the new you for your new baby right yeah right great so i wanted to first like uh, if we are able to transform the baby in the womb itself now prepare or adopt holistic approach as a mother and make a child adopt a holistic approach to life in the womb itself this world this whole no universe would be different so true so yeah, true. this planet would be different no? but, but do you, do you find a lot of uh, people accepting this idea uh not much but yes the there is like the way we have seen the shift in last 3 months hmm. no people who didn't want to talk yes. about wellness <laughs> they want to embrace this holistic wellness concept yes. Uh, that that is that is one thing which uh, yeah. this pre these present day situations uh, yeah. are bringing uh, the the kind of positivity you know although yeah. i feel it is a fear laden positivity yeah out of fear yeah. they are running towards uh, something which uh, would perhaps give them a solution mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, so far so good you know uh, yeah. even if it is a fear laden positivity why not you know i right. at least I, i i look at it that way that whatever little positivity can be gained why not Right, so right. so uh, now uh, this tell me a little bit more about this concept of developing the baby as you wish to uh, develop them right in the womb because i know the western world is adopting this for quite some time mm -hmm. from the indian uh, perspective what yeah. do you find uh, do you find a lot of takers for this yeah yeah it's there in a the mythology we have all heard the story of abinu <laughs> yes abinu's yes. story is yeah is there all all there yes so we are all aware that it works yes and we were always as especially as indians we were always conscious about this you know my mom used to always relate to us in this form that what kind of state of mind she had when she uh, she conceived me and during my this thing period in the womb and she used to always keep on comparing our nature as uh, siblings i am talking about now i have got uh, three more slips siblings i am the youngest in my family with her state of mind in the womb now you are like this because i was like this during that time and it was so much there and deeply uh, ingrained in my subconscious that i was very very conscious uh, during my first child now women are not so aware and they are full of fears that no i should not uh, eat this or i they're just full of fearful thoughts and i was all all the time very relaxed and just focusing on what kind of child i am creating am i sculpting my dream child what kind of qualities i want my child to have and you know that time i was a core technical person and i read so many telecom papers so many white papers so many studies my uh, son i was very clear that this, this is a son i had that intuition is going to be very techy mm -hmm. and it came 100% true at the age of 10 he cleared some international programming certification which had 14 levels oh and he said i did this in the womb i knew it this is going to happen mm -hmm. and and i am in mca and he was just 10 and for every technical problem i used to go to my son at he was he is now 14 and he is like much more ahead technically than me right. he is able to create games he is uh, so good at programming he is a born programmer okay so, okay no and then i was i could see whatever way i conceived him no created him he is exactly like that so in second child like i knew it was a daughter at that time somehow intuitively i knew and i the first thing i did the moment i came to know about my pregnancy i started putting the qualities of my child in a document that she yeah. sh she will have these leadership qualities she will have these attributes now how can you know i know for journal maintenance of a journal yeah huh. so, no it was i used to be always on my laptop so i just oh, no that's not like you did it on the laptop that's okay but uh, yeah. kind, of, kind of a journaling uh, thing yeah yeah okay. yeah right exactly 
and now when i look at her she's very assertive then i tell myself i had put this uh, this thing that she has to be assertive my son is not assertive at all and I, and so i said it is it is because of me she is so assertive she okay. has to do things on the way she believes in so i am tempted to ask you a question right here uh, about your coaching clients i know there is a certain confidentiality element involved so keeping that uh, uh, very much in mind tell me a little bit when you uh, coach somebody one on one uh, do you tell these things to people actually take pregnancy coaching from you uh, what, how how does it go i mean do you yeah. how do you discuss this information uh, so some things like like what i'm sharing with you i have shared with many clients of my who have taken pregnancy coaching for me first thing i share which i'm sharing again my conception date my delivery date the mode of delivery both for normal deliveries and the gender of child i have declared i declared and shared with many people that i am going to deliver son on this date through normal delivery and it happened okay good ways and the doctor had predicted another date like for my daughter i predicted that she is going to come on 2nd october it being gandhi gandhi jayanti okay right and i was admitted in the hospital on 1st of october i was in labor and doctor said you're going to deliver before 12 i said no i told my mom also i said no she is going to come after 12 i have spoken to her i know she is listening to me she is going to come after 12 and she came on second that's fantastic but see i can see that you have a deep intuitive understanding of these things yeah, yeah. my question really is uh, priti mm-hmm. how do you deliver this deep intuitive understanding to your coaching mm-hmm. clients because yeah. uh, see uh, people live uh, on different levels of uh, yes, yes. superficiality or depth whatever where we mm. perceive it mm. it's mm. all the same so how mm. do you deliver this level of intuitivity or intuitiveness to another person yeah so i just have to enable them to tune their heart energy mm-hmm. expand their heart energy normally all of us are mind center and because we are mind center we are just driven by our thoughts and feelings thoughts and emotions to be precise mm-hmm. feelings are different emotions are different right so na thought comes and do this do that just procrastinate this and we are just driven by our thoughts and our emotions no life becomes a becomes an emotional roller coaster ride that way mm. once we start expanding our heart energy intuition is like we are, we all have intuition only thing we have not we are not connected to intuition mm. and pregnancy is the best time to develop that Mm-hmm. it is the best time it comes naturally so many things come naturally to you you can understand now being a mother now okay. so many experiences start happening and so many new things start happening just because you feel that you are a channel of divine love so okay. when you tune to the love and light inside your heart mm-hmm. you always get those messages and then with your heart energy you connect to your baby create a very deep bond with your baby inside the womb yes and it's like it's different with every women when they share their experiences i'll uh, share about one of my clients experience she said uh, i never had a sweet tooth and i somehow get all these messages from my baby i want to have this sugary thing <laughs> so <laughs> and she was very conscious she was she had done some modeling you know before uh, she got pregnant she was she had all those fears that i'm going to put put on weight i have always been so conscious of my diet but my you now baby is always telling me to have this the uh, you know this one message i get all the time said okay just limit the sugar intake but have something maybe you can have fruits you know maybe you can have better healthier options but you have to listen to your baby in this time yes definitely you have to listen to the baby's demands yeah, yeah. they don't <laughs> take care of all the weight right. situations or whatever you know at a later stage yeah so i i understand what you're saying at a very deep intuitive level mm-hmm. uh, what what i'm uh, thinking is that uh, uh, this is just a wonderful field mm-hmm. uh, we should do more uh, web streaming on this i would, right. I would invite you again uh, later on in our uh, future sessions so that we can uh, do it live and connect with a larger audience uh, yeah. would you be all, all for it all for it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much priti uh, see uh, as uh, the present day situations are uh, moving ahead mm-hmm. uh, the 
uncertainty in the market is there definitely mm. so um, yeah. see apart from digitalizing the whole uh, process of training mm. and coaching mm. what uh, other tools do you think we should uh, start utilizing as an industry some some adaptability issues right. are there a lot of things are there. especially i'm speaking from the indian market perspective see right. uh, no matter how much uh, uh, disaster has happened in the world i think the western market is still more adaptable to technology than the indian market so yeah. i'm i'm speaking from the perspective of the indian market how do you uh, think indian market is going to evolve in the coming months in the yeah. coming years right see as a trainer normally i used to have or every trainer has more, more or less whole day now usually corporates look for maximum like two days intervention one day interventions or half day interventions so we know we have all the time in the world and we are able to deliver the message the objectives are very clear and we are able to deliver now what we were delivering in one day we have to create the same impact in one hour and it is challenging and i am facing this this challenge nowadays like if i am trying to improve the morale morale employee morale for one of my clients na and i feel i have to prepare more than ever Mm-hmm. because the time is so limited now mm-hmm. what has to be said in what way with what example with what exercise has to be clear and bang on you don't have time you don't have a second chance right mm-hmm. earlier we had all the chances now one thing does not work the second activity will will work this is not working the other thing will work and ultimately you are able to create an impact right and then you get good feedback and then you are okay with that but right now if, if after every webinar i'm looking at my content this is not okay i need to rework on it mm. and this is not according to a one hour content so because it's not that people won't because i'm getting a lot of this thing opportunities like right now what you can do for our company for our people they are losing their morale they are not motivated enough they are not putting the 100% they are full of fearful thoughts they are full of negativity and they are not giving the best performance what can be done what are the solutions you are here to offer and i am like constantly looking at it what i can do what more i can do and that's the way every trainer and coach has to look at it right you you so right and and this this work from home situation that has kind of suddenly been thrust upon us is uh, also quite challenging because see when you have to go out and work uh, it's it's like people resisting uh that uh, up to after a certain extent they want holidays and they want a vacation but once yeah. this thing has been thrust upon us it's simple human nature you start resisting that you know so it's yeah. like that you, you resist whatever is thrust upon you so yes absolutely. Absolutely. i think i think it's a, it's a different kind of challenge uh, which is emerging that uh, right, right just because right. it is not a voluntary thing yeah most people it's like yeah. uh, something which is outside and they don't want to contract it that's where they are secluded inside and isolated inside the homes right and similarly okay. like there are challenges related to communication hmm. see you have to create uh, the guidelines how will you communicate that you have done this very very precisely concisely now now because okay. otherwise you will face communication gaps people are not yeah. talking to each other much hmm. they are doing the way they think that it is right really? now then presenting things some people are very good face to face when it comes to a webinar they are not good enough they not feel sure. that they are not good good enough sometimes 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 it is just a perception that how will i be effective i have never used this so all those barriers all those things which we used to live by we cannot let ourselves live by those barriers hmm. we have to keep on breaking such barriers and yes. move forward at an accelerated pace now that's the need of the art that you cannot say that this is who i am uh, what is an ident what is identity is story about yourself that i am like this i can do this i cannot do this i can never learn technology there's so many people so many people like that yeah they're so intelligent they are so effective in other areas but yes. now you cannot give yourself any excuse whatever you need to know you have to know yeah. and you have to learn you have to be open to learn Yes. In fact, I see the Indian market dominated by a lot of uh, people who are heavily technologically challenged. Yes. And uh, all of a sudden, the things have changed. 
the yes, circumstances yes. have changed because a lot of people come and ask me how do you do online coaching i have been doing online coaching for like 10 years now because i uh, see my life situations were such that i had to resort to the internet and internet was like amazing platform for me because uh, the moment you hit the button and reaches half the way across the world you know some of that thought is so exciting for me even now <laughs> that how, how fast the communication goes how precisely the communication goes so i just uh, gradually uh, i mean just just kept on molding myself into the online coaching okay. environment and now it has suddenly become as you very rightly say the need of the hour the people uh, like there is no preparatory time anymore for anybody mm. you have to kind of overnight evolve yourself yeah. into the technology mm-hmm. right absolutely you make it a part of your life i am working on some proposal which i have never ever thought of hmm. and and i'm ready to do that hmm. and i feel very very fulfilled nowadays because my just the creative juices have started flowing hmm. and i am seeing a very creative side of me which i was not even aware of hmm. so i am i'm feeling really fulfilled that see so many gifts from this quarantine yes. so let me be thankful for these gifts which i am receiving every day Yes, gratitude is something that can develop at any point in time when you start just changing your perception about the situations, whatever the situations and circumstances may be. Right. There is a seed of gratitude everywhere, which you can start yeah. reaping immediately if you look at it that way. Yes, and people are ready to help you, support you. Right. So many are there out there. No, wherever your challenge, you know, you just Google it. You'll get oh, some video. Yeah. I know you. You'll get some help. Absolutely, you don't have to be stuck for anything. Anything. That's the best part. See, absolutely, yes, to live in this kind of era. <laughs> absolutely, I, I endorse it hundred percent. You know, you just Google it. You just go on a chat room and you just put your question, and there are yes. suddenly you find twenty people jumping and helping you out. Yes, it was yes. this earlier. I mean, right. we are very fortunate to be living in this. Yeah, absolutely. Fast communication. We being like we have taken a schooling in twentieth century. No, I think you and me. <laughs> no, I'm much older. I'm much older than than you. <laughs> Almost same. I have spent more than four decades on this planet. I think you are also maximum five five more, decades. More, more than that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it is just a number. It is just a number. I, I just you know, no, what it takes to refer a book in the library. Now, mm-hmm. how much time goes into researching on some topic? Now, here everything is just a, just a mouse click away. Absolutely, absolutely. I just love it. I absolutely love the technological environment that we are living in. I'm not a techie. I can mm-hmm. use technology very well, but I'm, I'm on, on the background of it. Whatever is happening, you know, I have technical people who handle it, but that's it. Uh, most of the people don't need to build the technology. They need to just use the technology and exactly. they just need to. get very efficient at using the technology because after all it's all about communication if you can communicate your message why not and that's it you know uh, as as a, a person in this industry for a long time i have also been thinking about one more element which i would want your input upon uh, see this training and coaching industry that we are a part of is uh, very time and presence intensive like you have to be there in order to uh, deliver your message mm-hmm. so um, there may be uh, separate tools there are plenty of them wherein uh, uh, some you know uh, some kind of methodology can be developed in which you can also have a passive stream of income mm-hmm. coming to you because yeah. see uh, this sudden situation has also kind of rocked the boat for many yes and right. like it or not money is something which you all which we all need which yeah. we all need to generate all the time so what are your thoughts on this yeah so you need to have multiple revenue streams you cannot depend upon one now hmm. it's like one to one coaching group coaching group coaching where now on whatsapp on uh, uh, zoom so and then you can have uh, this thing uh, doing uh, one hour webinar two hours webinar four hours webinar now uh, all these things Now, so from webinar, from WhatsApp coaching, from coaching on uh, uh, Skype, coaching on calls, so so many ways, and plus your video courses. Then you can build on your uh, this thing, your video channel on YouTube, uh, your YouTube channel, and then 
it can again become a source of revenue for you and there are so many ways you can create content online there are so many sites out there who pay you for your content for your blogs and even blogging can give you money if you are good at it anything there you are good at you can even like polish yourself more so that it becomes a stream uh, another revenue stream for you and you need to have many many at least five new revenue streams at the same time at yeah the, at the same time right. Right. right and you have to create your business in such a design your business your work in such a way that you are uh, uh, earning money while you're sleeping i know right. so, that that's, that is very important you know this passive uh, stream of income uh, is has been on my mind for quite some time i've spoken a lot about it but you know my company we are trying to develop a solution we are kind of almost reached there i, I will not reveal much as of now because uh, we are, are into some process of beta testing and all those things but uh, we uh, later on i will put a link uh, in the description of this video and uh, uh, interested people can just uh send us an email and when we are absolutely ready we will get back to them we will not bombard really them with a lot of information a lot of uh, emails that is that salesy stuff is something that i'm totally against i don't want to annoy anybody with it but right now uh, not revealing much but we are trying to reach a solution which would take care of this passive income stream generation situation because eventually the industry that we are operating in is very active we have to be present there in order to deliver we were talking about this initially that every audience is different every time you have to adjust your message so uh, doing that as well as uh, generating a passive source of income how do we manage both together so that we reach some kind of a balance is what has been on my mind for quite some time and for the last one year i've been uh working along with my team on this so let's see let's see if something so comes through active in your I'll leave, I'll leave a link and interested people can drop in their mails and we can communicate all the very best for your new venture i know you're going it's to not going to be a new venture priti uh, just like you said you know you just shoot all the arrows all together so it's something like another arrow shot in kind of a little off shoot manner but uh, more or less going to be the same industry same uh, situation some a solution to the present day situations which can be a long term uh, investment for a lot of people you know so that's what i've been thinking i don't okay. great thing upon uh really uh, it's just wonderful uh, speaking with you and we will do a lot of uh, live streaming sessions later on uh, can i do for the reasons uh, tell me a little bit about your third book i know that you have written three books yes. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your third book yeah. the third book just i contributed one chapter and it is program your mind to a slim body how you can change your body by changing your mind changing your beliefs changing the way you visualize yourself changing mm -hmm. the way the image you create about yourself in your mind and changing the way you believe about food believe about exercise uh, how you relate to your health to your body so it's about that and now i'm writing a whole book on this believe yeah it's right? about yeah it's about being health lean healthy and happy i How would love to read that yeah. thank so, you so uh, one of one of the people i consider as my mentors nevil goddard i have been just a fantastic fan of his uh his work because see he passed away long time back when i <laughs> have not even entered this industry but coming from the advertising side we have a different sense of belief and paradigms and all those things you know advertising people think differently but when i came into this industry and i started studying all these mental principles the metaphysical mm -hmm. it was a sea change mm -hmm. a sea change of belief mm -hmm. you know as it was like a different world altogether mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit more about this book of yours i'm sure it's going to be a phenomenal thing yeah it's about the science of getting lean healthy and happy and it is on individual wellness so i have uh, if you can see i have eight mantras i'll just make you see if you can have a look okay yes yes now it is clear yeah you can just read it no yeah. turn the camera a little bit more yes yeah. now i can read just read it out yeah this the diet eat mm. right shine bright feel light massage right sleep tight must exercise don't slacken slight so these are 
eight mantras and these are eight chapters in my book i i love the first one. one i love the first one i think there is there is a lot going on over there just the diet <laughs> yeah. tell me more about it <laughs> yeah so anything which you cannot follow for the entire lifetime any right. diet you right. don't go for it. right so why you have to dish the diets yes because one day uh, you feel that yes uh, Uh, and the moment you get uh, this thing you're on any diet if some dietitian gives me diet i want to have everything except that has been suggested to me true i am just like what can i eat is this allowed is that allowed so you become obsessed with food unless yeah. and until you transform your relationship with food you cannot create your dream body and health hmm. what is food for you hmm. so that is one thing which i am looking at in multiple chapters in different forms that will be an interesting read yeah. absolutely and it will it will kind of shatter a lot of paradigms prevailing in the industry because a lot of people you know i i feel going on a diet is like a fad people just announce yeah. it to each other oh i am yeah. on a diet as if you were uh, going to the moon or something you know like yeah. something <laughs> because i personally cannot follow any diet i've never dieted ever in my life i've never done it but i've never put on weight also so okay wonderful you are one of those blessed <laughs> ladies you know, with age know. with age you you kind of it's you kind of put on a little bit it's not yeah. that i'm exactly the same as what i was 20 years ago but you know not going on a diet was a, a conscious decision because just like you said whenever uh, you are on a diet you feel like eating something is as if your body is revolting against you whatever yeah. you want to eat every every thing uh, that you are not supposed to eat at that point in time and that kind of conflict was very uh, troublesome for me mm -hmm. that's the reason why i could not go on a diet ever i can relate to what you are saying deeply <laughs> relate but why is it so why is it so that when uh, a diet plan is prescribed the body mm -hmm. usually goes into a revolt mode yes is it like is uh, the body is telling you something yes first thing is like what you resist is that persist you are yes. resisting a few things like if somebody comes to me huh, and they say won't you give a diet plan now huh, my answer is that i will help you i don't believe in diet plans i will help you to create meal plans mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. first thing is this and secondly that if you cannot adhere to it for the entire lifetime then what's the point you are on this diet and you have not changed your habits Hmm. then the moment you stop this uh, relationship with me you will again start putting on weight do you want that to happen hmm. they say no no hmm. so they understand this then they talk about all those diets which they have taken and how they shed weight for a while and then they put, put it on again hmm. right that's that's a usual thing that's a yeah, usual that's a usual and they put on even more weight hmm. than what they had lost Mm -hmm. and so many studies have uh, showed that i have have uh, proven that right so it's like uh, i just keep on asking like what do you like to have what do you really love to have because that i have to put it in put it in some meal plan no mm -hmm. because i never ever talk about what you will not have i just talk about what what more you can have what else you can have because wow. i understand the laws i understand how mind works wow that's that's powerful that's powerful yeah. that's right. very so powerful so the focus is on completely you can have this you can add this you can add these herbs you can add uh, these spices you can add these uh, tonics you know these herbs so it's like what whatever this this supplement you can add you know this vegetable juice you can add so these fruits you can add so they should be totally focusing on now what can i have now instead of resisting saying no to this i won't have that's Because, that's absolutely phenomenal that's that's just yes. powerful <laughs> thank you so that that's the way i look at it then like what what kind of exercise you love to do you mm. you feel that this is the best moment of my day so i just take out those types of exercise create the fitness plan accordingly see it's not what they are uh, they need to do what they are able to do is more important yes yes, huh? yes. so if if i tell them you have to do this you have to do that and i know that they're not they'll not be able to do 
what's the what's point? the point? What's the point? What's the point? So I need to understand what will work for them, and every individual, every body, every mind is different. You need to adapt. Very yeah. true. You're coaching Very. accordingly, and then it works, and people see results, and then they're able to change their habits. and then they feel good about themselves <laughs> and it kind of becomes like a, a different kind of uh, emotional roller coaster they want to yes. do more of it you know? yeah it yeah. makes them feel good yeah and it it creates an impact in other areas also when they are effective in one area it's like they, there's a quote now how do you do one thing defines how do you do everything true hmm? true very true very true Priti, that was absolutely phenomenal. You just you just shared something very wonderful. I think a lot of people should take it to heart. And uh, I I think somewhere I have also unconsciously taken it to heart that no matter what happens, I'll be all right. You know, if I feel like eating some sugar or chocolates or whatever, you know, I'll be all right. So somehow the body has also understood how to assimilate it well. Yeah. I think I think that's that's very phenomenal, very very powerful message you just shared. And uh, uh, Preeti, I think uh, we'll have to wind up now because we are yeah, yeah. speaking for. I can go on and on, you know, but I know I have <laughs> other commitments. And <laughs> you, I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, you took out time to be uh, with me on this. And uh, we'll we'll put this video on the YouTube channel, and I'll try putting it on Facebook and other places also. Mm-hmm. I think most uh, importantly, uh, rather than trying to put it. Uh, for uh, some publicity uh, related measures i think it is more important the message goes out yeah. predominantly to the right people and uh, i would uh, request you also to share it in your networks yeah. because there's some very phenomenal information that you've shared and i'm so I happy so happy we could do this finally <laughs> let's do it again thank you so much priti and uh, all the very best in all of your endeavors Uh, do send the Kindle links to uh, Kindle and Amazon links to these books. I'll yeah. tag them in the description, and sure. uh, we'll meet again soon. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. I always look forward to such a <laughs> such a and such an enriching conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Preeti. Looking forward Thank to all of you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Have a good time. Bye. Thanks. Same. Same to you.